Today's video is giving these babies a makeover using the 3M AccuSpray Gum. This is my gun of choice, and I'll show you exactly how I get my professional look. Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Sab's Rehabs where I take outdated vintage old furniture and give it a new life. If you are new to the channel and you like furniture makeovers, go ahead and give me a like and a sub. If you're already subbed to my channel, make sure you hit that bell because I'm not on a set schedule with my videos and that bell will let you know when I have new stuff that comes out. These nightstands were a Facebook Marketplace find, and I don't know if your area is like mine, but every time I get on Facebook Marketplace, it seems that I come across a new furniture flipper. So in today's video, we will go over using a 3M AccuSpray gun to give these a professional finish and hopefully make your work stand out above others. There's just something about a smooth glass finish that makes pieces look brand new, factory, and professional, and that's what we're going to go for. I started this set by removing the hardware and then removing the pieces that aren't going to stay on it before I got to a thorough cleaning. I will get to the breakdown of how to use the AccuSpray gun, but first I want to quickly go through the steps up to the painting point. Next up is stripper. This is clean strips, quick strip in the 15 minute formula. It is a lot faster than the 30 minute formula. So that's why I go with the 15 minute. I pour a generous amount onto the surface that I want to strip and then use a foam or chip brush to spread it around. Now this is a chemical and has a very strong spell smell so make sure that you are in a heavy ventilated area that you wear gloves to protect yourself and that you also wear a mask to protect your lungs and you can see how well this stuff works here in just 15 minutes if you're new to stripping you definitely want to use a plastic scraper to scrape the old finish off I was not able to find any of mine around the workshop because it's kind of a mess right now. So I am using a metal one here and using very little pressure. With this stripper on it, the wood is wet and you can gouge it very easily. So that's why I highly recommend using a plastic one. And who doesn't love seeing an old failing finish scraped away to make room for some new beginnings? I keep old empty paint cans around so I have a place to scoop this goopy mess into. After stripper, you want to neutralize the stripper, so I'm using mineral spirits. Now, it says that it's odorless, but I don't even know why it says that on there because it is not at all. I pour a generous amount on. This is, again, another chemical, so you want to make sure that you're still wearing a mask, that it's ventilated, and that you are wearing gloves. I'm using super fine grade steel wool here just to rub off any remaining stripper, and then I wipe all that away with the cloth and let it dry. Once it's dry, I do use my carbide scraper to scrape the few areas where there is still a lot of the old finish on. After the scraper, I do grab my mouse sander with a 120 grit sandpaper and go over the nightstand tops and around the edges. After that, I do come back with some 220 grit sandpaper to go over the tops and then I also scuff sand the remaining body of the nightstands just to give some tooth grit, some hold, extra hold for my primer to stick to. This will help ensure that I have a lasting finish. After all that sanding, I wipe the dust away with a dry cloth first to get the big dust and then come back in with a damp cloth to remove any remaining dust residue. Once the surface is thoroughly dry, I grab Verithane's gel stain. The color that I'm using is called Briar Smoke. Using gel stain is a very easy process. I wear gloves and use a clean old t-shirt piece 
and it says to rub it on originally going against the grain so my method to go against the grain is to rub it in circles and then I go back with long sweeps going the direction of the grain you let the gel stain sit for two to three minutes and then come back with again a clean but old t-shirt piece and wipe away any remaining excess stain just try to use even pressure as you're swiping the excess away i love the gray kind of rustic vibe that this gel stain leaves I let the gel stain dry overnight and the next day I top coated it with very Verithane's polyurethane in the satin finish. It is an oil-based formula. I did three coats allowing it to dry four hours in between each coat. This is the 3M AccuSpray gun. It sprays everything, primer, paint, polyurethane, shellac, lacquer, enamel. It even sprays marine top coat. I have no idea what that is, but it will spray it. And no, this isn't a sponsorship. I just really love my gun. This is a kit that you can buy off Amazon. It comes with almost everything you need to spray your furniture. And it includes a chart to show you what nozzles to use for what product. To assemble the gun, you will need a few items not included in the kit. You will need two wrenches, some plumber's tape, and a fourth inch swivel adapter. Those are all items that you can find at your local hardware store. To attach the gaze, gauge that comes in the kit you want to use a plumber's tape on the threads that are at the bottom of the gun make sure to wrap your tape the opposite direction so with this case righty tidy so you want to wrap the plumber's tape going to the left if not whenever you go to tighten your piece you'll just unravel your plumber's tape once you have the plumber's tape on, just attach the gauge and you will use your two wrenches going in opposite directions from each other to tighten it up. And then you will repeat that process all over again to attach the fourth inch swivel plug to the bottom of the gauge. Now on the back of the gun are two knobs and I start by going ahead and closing those all the way to the right. So turn them clockwise. The top knob is your fan adjustment knob. So I turn that to one and a half and that just controls how big of a spray comes out of your gun. The other knob is your needle fluid adjustment knob and this controls how much fluid comes out when you pull the trigger and I rotate that three full turns going counterclockwise. So when you're done, the little slashes or marks will be facing towards each other. And that's the setting that works best for me. Now the manual calls these automizing heads. I call them nozzles and I only use two of them for spraying furniture. To spray my primer and paint, I use the clear nozzle that's 1.8 millimeters. Now, the 3M gun is a gravity fed, so the nozzle to attach to the paint needs to go up in the air, pull the trigger of the handle, and then feed the needle into that little cylinder area. You're supposed to push it until it clicks, but I have to push it down, so I'm holding the handle this whole time and I push it down until I hear the click. And then after that, your nozzle is attached. 
For operation, this gun is dependent upon at least a 30 gallon air compressor, and then you'll also need an air hose. I went with a 100 foot air hose just so I have the length to spread my pieces out if I want to spray multiple pieces at one time. I think a 50 foot air hose would give you plenty of space though. When spraying furniture, you also want to have a designated area or spot to spray your furniture in. I am in the middle of a workshop makeover transition, so I am covering my tools that I don't want to get any overspray with blankets, and that's just my makeshift thing going I'm doing right now. You can spray outside or even buy one of the spray tents that I've seen. Also, you want really good ventilation. So I have an industrial air filter. A box fan is good as well. And you, I always open my garage door to get good airflow. You also want to protect yourself. So I cover my hair since I have dreads. The air compressor I have is kind of loud. So I wear earplugs to protect my ears. You also want to make sure that you're not breathing in paint particles, so have a ventilator mask that fits you correctly on your face. And then to protect your eyes, you want to wear goggles. I have to admit, I forget those often though. You also want to have a way to lift your piece up off the ground, so I'm going to use the legs that are attached to the nightstands. And then you want to tape up or cover any area that you don't want painted. So since these, I'm doing a two-tone wood top painted body, I went ahead and used some butcher paper and masking or painter's tape to cover the tops of the nightstands. To lift your piece up off the floor, you can use the old paint cans or they have painter's pyramids that you can buy off Amazon that are pretty cheap. Now, the Dyson has drawers and to protect the insides of the drawers to get any overspray, I always use painter's tape to go across the drawer and that seems to work pretty well for me. Lastly, before painting, you want to consider weather conditions. You want the temperatures to be above 50 degrees Fahrenheit. I usually wait for 50, at least 55 degree Fahrenheit before I will spray my furniture. Humidity is another factor that plays into spraying furniture. So on days that it is going to rain or it has rained, I recommend not spraying your furniture that day. You're not going to get the desired look and finish that you want. I typically wait for at least or under 50% humidity in my workshop before I will spray furniture. All right, now let's get to using this gun. Now on Amazon, you can purchase two different AccuSpray kits. There is the 26580 kit and then the 16580 kit. You can use this video for both of the guns, but there is a $50 price difference. So let's go over the difference between the two. On the right is the 16580 kit, and then on the left hand side is the 26580 kit that comes with more liners and filters. The nozzles for both guns are different, so they are not interchangeable. I don't really have an opinion which one is better on that. With the 265, the filtered lid has the black ring attached, which in my opinion is an upgrade because the 165 kit, you can see my ring is old and nasty. Also, the measuring system is a little bit different. This is the measuring from the old kit, the 165.80. On the 8 to 1 ratio, the 8, the product on the left, is where I fill it. The middle one I ignore, and then the water goes to the 8 on the right. And that's the percentage. It's about 23-25% watering down. Now, the new cup, the measuring is a little bit different, so I'm used to the old one. I lined it up on the cup and then use this 165 or 650 mil milliliter chart here is the closest measurements to what I'm used to. So I will put the product uh, to the 500 milliliters and then aim for the water to be the 21 ounce marker. Put your liner in the cup and then we are ready for product. Now this gun can spray a lot of product, but I use water-based product. It's the easiest to learn and work with. So this is Kills Primer. It is gray, but you can see it has a very thick consistency. And I'm going to shoot 
for that 500 milliliter marker to fill in the product with. And then with the water, I'm going to add and I'm going to aim for that 21 ounce mark. And you'll see here that I kind of overshoot the water a little bit, add it too much, but no worries. I just add in a little bit more primer and then mix it together. You can see that it's two separate liquids here and you want to stir until they're completely combined in one fluid together. And then just notice the difference here between the consistency of the two products. Next, you want to make sure that the lip of your cup liner is free of any paint so you get a nice seal when you add your filtered lid. There are two different filtered lids that you can buy. There is a blue with a finer grade filter or the clear. I've always used the clear. It works just fine. Make sure you also tighten that black ring down so you get a good seal. Your canister is ready for you to attach the gun, so just flip it upside down. Press the nozzle head all the way down and then tighten it up. Flip your gun over and then you are all set up and ready to start spraying. All right, I go ahead and turn my air compressor on and attach my gun to the hose. And then I wait for the gauge to read. You want to spray when it's between 100 and 120 PSI. I first test my spray on particle board before I do any furniture work. I have the nozzle where the knobs are left and right, so that is horizontal spray side to side. You can rotate the tip of your nozzle to where the points are up and down or on top of each other, and you move your hand up and down whenever you spray. While spraying furniture, you want to occasionally look at that gauge to make sure that PSI is staying between 100 and 120. With my 30 gallon air compressor, when I am spraying the paint and primer, sometimes I do have to stop and wait for that PSI to build back up to 100. If you have a larger size air compressor, it's probably not going to be an issue for you. When spraying drawers, I spray the opening around the drawers first, put them in, stagger them, spray the tops of the drawers, push the drawers in a little bit more so I can do the vertical setting and do one stripe down the side to paint the sides of the drawers. When it's, that is done, I go ahead and push the drawers all the way in, turn the nozzle back to the horizontal setting and spray side to side and paint the entire front side of the drawers. When I spray large open spaces that don't have drawers, I do the horizontal setting to spray the top and bottom, and then do vertical and spray up and down, making stripes to fill the area. Now you can see that my pattern, I'm overlapping a little bit here, so I don't get streaks. It's more of a solid coverage. After the first coat of primer was done, I removed the gun from the air hose and then wrapped the gun in a plastic bag to protect the nozzle from getting crusted and closed up. And I do that in between all my coats of all the water-based products that I use. After two coats of primer, I dump the excess that I have in my canister back into the can because all I did was add a little bit of water to thin it out. And then I'm going to clean out this liner and filter and nozzle so I can use this same set to spray my paint and top coat. So I wipe out what I can with a cloth and then I rinse it off outside in the air hose and then I go inside and wash it and I'm sorry when I go inside to wash, uh, my shoulder was in the way so I don't really have the best angle but I use Dawn dish soap and some warm water and just scrub everything trying to get all the remaining product off of it. Now if washing a lot is not your thing, I these are disposable but I care about the environment so I wash and reuse as many times as possible. For the nozzle, I bought some metal straws on Amazon and that scrubber came with them and that's what I use to clean out my nozzle thoroughly. 
All right, I put the liner back in the cup and let's do the paint now. I use chalk paint, it's bare chalk paint and it's a water base. So we're gonna use water to thin this out as well. I use the same thing like I do with the primer. I fill up, I'm aiming for that 500 milliliter mark with the paint and then I come back with water and I'm aiming for that 21 ounce mark and I do much better this time. I got it the first time. And then again, mix it until the water and the paint are mixed thoroughly together. So when it comes to getting the right consistency, you want to think top coat. So a polyurethane or really watered down paint is the consistency you want to spray liquids through this gun. Now I just got done washing this nozzle out, so I'm using my air hose to blow out water. You wanna make sure that you do that because if there are water droplets that are in your nozzle, it will spray onto your piece of furniture and it will not look pretty. I know that because I've done it from experience. So either let the air nozzle dry thoroughly or use the air gun like I did to blow it out. And before each product, I always test it on my scrap piece because I wanna have an accident on the scrap piece and not the actual piece of furniture. I spray three coats of paint, letting it dry for about an hour in between each coat of paint. I mentioned that I was spraying bare chalk paint, but I guess I should tell you what color I'm using. This is a custom color mix. It is two thirds of farmhouse white, and then the other third is an even mixture of the color downtown gray and tin white. I love mixing colors together to see what I can come up with. If you want a smooth finish between every layer of primer, paint, and top coat, I take an 800 grit sanding sponge, lightly go over the surface, and then I wipe the dust away before I apply the next coat, whatever it is. So take note here of the pace or rhythm that I move my hand to. So the settings that I have on the adjustment knobs on the back of the gun the consistency that I water my product down to all work with the rhythm of my hand or the pace that I move at so I don't get drips in my finish. So these are the settings that I have given you that I have fine tuned over the last couple years and I have found what works for me. So that's a good place to start out for you. But just be kind to yourself and know that starting to spray your paint with a gun is a huge learning curve and it's going to take a few pieces for you to get your rhythm down. So sometimes I like to save my paint in the container that it comes with. So the kit does come with these really cool plugs that you can put in the top and save it in. This is the final sanding and wipe down of the paint before we get to adding top coat. All right, to spray top coat, I put a liner in the cup holder and I'm using Verithane's polyurethane. It is a water-based formula and I love the clear satin finish. Now for this top coat, it is a very thin consistency as is with most top coats. So typically you don't have to water this down at all. You can spray it directly, but on really hot days when it's above 95 degrees, I do add just a tiny bit of water. You can see that was just a small amount and that allows more time for your top coat to level out before it dries in the really high heat. For spraying top coat, I am using the orange nozzle and that's a 1.4 millimeter. You can also use the clear nozzle to spray your top coat, but you have to be really familiar with your gun because you have to move your hand very, very quickly to avoid drips. So if you're new, I would definitely plan on sticking with the orange nozzle for your top coat. It's just gonna be easier for you to learn with and cause less disaster until you get more familiar with the gun. 
And then just notice here with spraying the top coat, even with using the smaller nozzle, I'm still moving my hand at a faster pace spraying this polyurethane than I did when I sprayed my paint or my primer because this is a much thinner product and I want to avoid drips if at all possible. I spray three coats of the top coat, letting it dry two hours between each coat. I know spraying your pieces takes a little bit more setup or prep than what a hand painted piece would, but if you're going to paint more than one piece at a time, I think from watching this video you can definitely see how spraying your primer, your paint, and your top coat is much faster with the 3M AccuSpray gun. When using your spray gun that's attached to the air compressor, make sure that you release your water at the end of each day. All the spraying is finally done, so I went ahead and removed my cover top to reveal the two-tone farmhouse-ish look I'm going for. I kept the handles original to the set and sprayed them first with the Antique Pewter by Rust-Oleum and then covered them with Annie Sloan's Black Wax for this antique silver look. Since I removed the appliques that were originally on the front of the drawers, the screws for the knobs were now way too long. So I used my bolt cutters to trim them down. I didn't have any of a shorter size in stock and I wasn't going to buy anything because everything is priced ridiculously high right now. So I made what I had work. And I think they turned out just fine. Then I removed the original legs, wiped down the bottom of the nightstands, and added some furniture glides, and then this piece is done. Here is a quick reminder of our before and what we started with, and our after! I hope you found this video helpful and I hope that I explain things in a way that makes sense to you. And I hope that if you are considering spraying your furniture, that this video gives you the confidence that you need to use your 3M AccuSpray to start getting that professional look. I am here to help you guys along your spray gun journey. So if you have any questions for me, feel free to comment them down below or feel free to reach out to me on any of my social media platforms. They are listed in the description. If you haven't already, like this video. That's all I have for you guys today. Until next time.